Welcome to the Build and Revitalize podcast, brought to you by SME. I'm your host, Allie Fry. The series tackles a topic that's really near and dear to my heart, gender inclusion in the AEC industry. Over the next few episodes, we'll talk to industry leaders on the importance of inclusion and how to establish initiatives that support women in the workplace. In our first episode in our gender inclusion series, Laleen Mitchell, NAWIC National President-Elect, shared some great insight onto why gender inclusion is important in the AEC industry. Today, we're going to keep the conversation going with Mark Kramer. Mark's been a leader in our industry for 30 years, and he's very active in GBA and Harvard Business School. Mark was a key player in bringing about SME's internal inclusion initiative, Women's Resource Network, or WRN. He's here today to share his perspective on what led SME to form this internal inclusion group. Welcome to the podcast, Mark. Great to be here, Allie. Why did you find it critical to support the creation of an internal women's group in the last year? I think this is really something that's been discussed for a number of years. And, you know, one of my biggest responsibilities is to help our team be successful and help find ways to remove hurdles and barriers to doing your job and being able to become better and be able to become the best version of yourself. And And over the past few years, in a number of conversations with various people, you know, some of our senior leaders, including some of our uh, senior female leaders, we continue to have discussions about challenges that uh, young staff are having and not just uh, females, but all the staff. And we've been on this journey to figure out how do we improve our education of our team members and how do we improve our team leaders and give them abilities to help the staff grow and develop. One of the ongoing themes was specifically the challenges uh, that young women have in our industry. There's a whole host of those. And over time, these conversations kept happening. And I, I always encourage people to work with others and try to figure those out. But it it just seemed to me that we weren't making the kind of progress that, that I'd like to see. And it really was a combination of some ideas and some conversations that I had with various people. And one of the concepts that you know struck me that I got from early in my career that was helpful getting to join an organization called YPO or Young Presidents Organization is the idea of a forum, basically a, a place or a safe place that a group of people that can get together and talk about common experiences and challenges they have. And I went through a lot early on in my career, taking over the business fairly young. And it was very helpful for me to have that group of people, group of peers to interact with and, you know, share my challenges and, you know, get guidance and advice from them and, and matching it with this idea of some kind of forum or some kind of safe place for the group to get together and sort of share the challenges that they ran into and maybe how they faced them. And so that uh, about a year ago, after some of those conversations and sort of that, I don't want to call it an aha moment, but sort of connecting the dots, I thought it might be a good idea to put the group together in that way. And and I can't say that it was my idea per se. I think others had similar ideas. I more had the ability to provide that space uh, for the people to do it. It's turned out way better than, you know, anticipated. I think it's the group and I've had the opportunity to sit on not all the meetings, but most of the meetings uh, with the group as an observer and a mentor. And I think it's really helped the group come together and understand a lot of the common issues that they face and the fact that they've all gone through similar things, even though they all have unique experiences, there's a lot of common sort of challenges and common things that are faced. And, and, and again, that's the experience I had in forum at YPO was you realize pretty quickly that even though we all have a unique life and a unique experience, there are a lot of common challenges and common things that we all experience and having people to talk to and be able to help you through those situations, I think is a great benefit. Absolutely, Mark. Looking at 
maybe somebody that doesn't automatically fit into that forum, say, if we're looking at gender inclusion, looking at it from a male perspective, what kind of benefits do you think that men in SME can gain from having WRN? There's a whole bunch of benefits. Uh, you know, I'll just share an experience I had. You know, in my forum, we had two female leaders in the group of eight, and there's other forums around us that had no females in the group. We had a totally different experience because the discussions that we had and the communication and the, the depth of the discussions and the depth of sharing was way more beneficial than what I gathered when I talked to other people. And so it's a whole host of things that as a male, we don't have perspective on. You know, I, I reflected on this after you asked me to, to do this podcast. How did I see this and where did I get some perspective from? And it's interesting because early on in my career, as I was sort of going through all the things that all the young staff go through, I realized I was very myopic. I was very focused on me and my issues. And it wasn't until the back part of my career, the last 10 or 20 years, where I've sort of had the observations of watching young people come up through the company, uh, watching my daughters grow up and go through challenges, having a lot of discussions and debates with my, my two daughters and getting their perspective on things, which really opened my eyes. And I think we don't, you know, growing up, you watch one movie, right? You watch your movie as you grow up and you get your own perspective. And I think it's until you start to be able to watch other people's movies and watch the perspective from other people's eyes and their experiences. And it may be the exact same experience, right? It may be you know, the first time you go out onto a job site and deal with a difficult contractor, you only get to experience that life once, but being able to see it and experience it through the eyes of others that have different perspectives is a real learning experience. And it starts to give you a much broader view of how you might address challenges that face you. You know, one of the powerful things that I learned in Forum was we don't try to give advice, but what we try to do in that is we share a concern or a challenge we have, and then everybody gets to share sort of an experience that maybe was similar and they share how they felt or how they thought through that period of time. And, and just that, you know, hearing all the different perspectives usually, in my experience, provided great wisdom and the ability to really look and think about things differently. And a lot of times you were able to come up with, you might be really stuck on a situation and very quickly you're able to come up with, you know, a much better solution. And so having this group and having that ability within the, the WRN to share their perspectives is one thing, right? That gives benefit to the people within the group and they can see and learn from each other. But on the broader perspective, being able to share some of those ideas just adds to the, the information and the valuable perspectives when looking at things and making decisions. And as, you know, as you're aware, the group has already looked at some issues that and some challenges that we had within the company. And, you know, we're able to provide a completely new perspective on, you know, some of these challenges that we might not have even have seen and provided great solutions to them. And so I think that's the, again, the value of forum and, and you can really put this in so many different contexts and put different groups together. But the underlying benefit is people getting together with sort of common interests who can share their story, share their movie, share their perspective, and then allow other people to learn from that. And through that process, it becomes very powerful for the person who's sharing their challenge to then learn and make better decisions from it, grow from it. And so clearly I've had the benefit in my forum of having that diversity of perspective that we've seen it this first year with the, the Women's Resource Network that both the, the group internal to themselves have benefited, but the larger organization has benefited. Mark, you talked a lot about the experience of our younger staff, even your experience early in your career and how that kind of 
helps change the colors in the movie that you're seeing. As we're looking at the army of co-ops that we bring on every year to help, how do you think WRN can benefit all of the co-ops and especially the young women that we hire? I think that's there's a huge opportunity there, and it's not just with our co-ops, but all our staff that come on, and that's not just at SME. I think it's everywhere. And you know, again, it really goes back to that that forum idea. Most people come into a career, come into a role, and you have your boss or your team leader or whatever it is that you, whatever term you use, and hopefully you get somebody who's great and wonderful and teaches and trains and mentors you, but that doesn't always happen. And there's also that tension in that relationship because there's the the fear and anxiety of making sure you do things right and that you're learning and growing and you're not making mistakes. And so for a lot of people, not having any kind of outlet or any place to sort of have those discussions and learn and grow from that is a huge lost opportunity. And the Women's Resource Network is a group of people who have been there and done that, right? They've gone through it. They've experienced many of the things that our co-ops and our young staff will experience. And, and I think that's the one thing that I learned before WRN, but it really was crystallized in some of those early conversations that we had that we all have a lot of common experiences. Everybody has unique experiences, but there's a lot of similarities and a lot of common themes, right? And just the fact of knowing that somebody else has gone through what you've gone through and that somebody else can sort of help you talk about it and just sort of get it out and look at it and be able to solve it rather than, you know, because normally what happens is people internalize it and then they think about it and they dwell on it. If they really don't have a good family network or a friend network to talk about those things with, it creates a lot of issues. And a lot of times, and and I, Ali, I don't know if you've experienced this, but I've definitely experienced this, is some things are really hard to talk about with friends and family because they've just They've never had the same experience. Absolutely. If they've never been on a construction site and had to deal with a, you know, a 55 year old superintendent, they'll try to be empathetic and they'll try to share some stuff, but it's just, it's not the same as somebody else who's pretty much gone through almost the exact same scenario, just in a different situation. Right. And so I think for all the co-ops and all the young staff, there's the opportunity and the value to talk to peers share some of those experiences and and know and understand that they're not alone and that other people have gone through it is is a huge benefit as i said earlier you know you want to take down the barriers and and make things easier for people and clearly if somebody comes and they knows that hey they've got somebody to talk to about this difficult situation it really provides more confidence and and empowers you to the point that you feel like you're not alone and I have actually had people share that comment with me that when they've been able to share those things, you know, they feel like, you know, they're not alone. And I think that's critical because I think that's why people leave the industry and in particular women, I think, leave the industry because they face a lot of challenges and the road is rocky and hard. And if they don't have somebody helping them along the way and showing them that there is a better, brighter path in front of them, we're going to lose a lot of you know, great people from the industry. I think you're absolutely right. I know in my career, it's been critical to have those conversations to know that I got backup if we're going through a difficult situation. You know, as we're wrapping up this conversation, Mark, uh, you mentioned at the beginning that it wasn't necessarily your idea that WRN was formed, but you gave it permission to exist. So what would you recommend for other business leaders who want to support something like this in their companies? And what are some of those first steps in starting the conversation with the leadership? There's always sort of barriers to change and and sort of that inherent built-in fear of change in almost any organization. And it's really not understanding or fearing what might come out of it or what's going to happen. And I think what's important is, and probably the easiest way is, is to just figure out a way to take a small step in a direction. Maybe it's if you're trying to 
build it within. Maybe it's just getting a few people together and doing a few things and then presenting it to somebody within the organization that you think uh, will champion it. It's interesting, you know, sitting as a CEO and at the beginning of this, you said, hey, you have a lot of demands on time and attention and resources. And that is one of the challenges that many people face. And so it's hard to see all the issues and see everything and be able to put time and attention on everything. And so if you can make it easy for somebody to sort of make that first step, right? We, you don't have to commit to solving every problem, but if, for example, just committing to getting together the first meeting with a small group of people and then seeing what happens from there. And I've learned that lesson here recently that you don't always have to make the whole decision. You can make a small decision in the direction that you want to go and then make another small decision and then another small decision rather than making one large decision. So being able to communicate with the people you're working with and saying, hey, we're not asking for all this. We would just like to have that first meeting and see how it goes. Or we would like to just get two or three people together and explore it. That's easier for somebody to commit to than it is committing to some big program or some something that they're just not, because it's always the fear of the outcome, right? They, they see all the effort and work that has to go into something and they don't know what the results are. And so if you can break it down to a much smaller, easier, bite-sized decision to make, you might get some momentum going, you know, as we saw with our group with WRN, you know, it took some time and momentum had to be built. As I shared with you, there was a number of conversations and I think people had ideas and, and I don't know, again, I only watched my movie. I didn't watch what everybody else was seeing. There could have been a lot more demand for this that was being talked about that I wasn't aware of, but at some point we made a decision, Hey, let's, Let's get a group of people together. And a lot of it was, hey, these are people that have expressed interest or asked questions in the past. Let's put them in a room together and start the discussion, right? And and I think we had that first meeting and I think everybody, you know, reflected at the end of the meeting and recognized, hey, this was worth our time. That was valuable. And so again, how do you sort of just get over that first little hurdle of the fear of committing resources or change or whatever's going to happen. But my experience in my career is after you've thought about things for a while and, and you think there's a good path and a good vision there, just making that first step is really the most critical one, right? Just getting, getting it going down the path. And once you've made that, usually, you know, everything after that's pretty easy. It's well said, Mark. Get it started. Get someone who's going to be the champion of the initiative so you can really bring this to life. I want to thank you again for your time today. It's been some great insight from a leader of the company of how important gender inclusion is in our industry. So thank you very much. Thank you, Allie. I hope I uh, could help in some small way. You're listening to our second episode in the Build and Revitalize podcast series on gender inclusion in the AEC industry. Don't miss our last episode in the series, where we'll be talking to the founding members of SME's Women's Resource Network, WRN. These ladies aren't just awesome coworkers, they're great role models and advocates for supporting women in our industry and encouraging young women to join our industry. They'll give us some insights and helpful hints for starting inclusion initiatives in your own firm. Be sure to subscribe to the Build and Revitalize podcasts on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen. Check out sme-usa.com slash podcasts to join the conversation, access show notes, and catch our future series on diversity and inclusion and other topics relevant to the AEC industry. While you're at it, connect with SME USA on LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. See you next time.